So in regards to these weigh boats and the various things inside the glove box, it's important to note that anything you want to have to work with in the glove box, you'll have to bring into the glove box with you. Um, so if you need to seal a flask in the glove box, for instance, you want to make sure that you bring in a septum. As you can see, there are a few there in that box. Um, stir bars, uh, spatulas to move compounds around with, anything like that. Also, um, you'll need to bring in or they'll need to be either some kind of receptacle for trash in the glove box or you'll want to bring your trash out with you. Um, depending on what kind of compounds you're working for, working with in the glove box, um, you may not want to bring those trash items out immediately if they have, say, a pyrophoric reagent on them. You don't want to cause a fire immediately, so leaving them in the glove box for a bit might uh, lessen that risk of bringing them out immediately. Um, it's important also to remember that anytime you're working in the glove box, remember or estimate that uh, anything you're doing in there will take about two to three times longer than it would if you were doing it just out on the bench or in a hood. Um, it's just a lot harder to work in these gloves and uh, <clears throat> harder to reach things. Um, it's harder to see because of the, you know, the window you're looking through sometimes. And um, yeah, it just, it always just takes much longer to do things in the glove box, so be aware of that. So for the gloves of the glove box, normally you would want them to be sticking out of the glove box. Um, if not, that can indicate that there's a problem with the glove box. Um, this isn't set up properly quite yet for that, but um, it, yeah, so if the gloves aren't sticking out or if they're like laying flat, that means that you don't have enough positive pressure in your glove box and you need to um, address that issue because that can indicate that your glove box has a leak and then it's not maintaining atmosphere properly. Before you enter the glove box to use the gloves, it's important that you take off any rings or watches that you might be wearing and that you have on a pair of clean gloves. Um, oftentimes it's pre preferable to either have on a lab coat or some kind of long sleeve shirt so that you don't get sweat from your arms on the inside of those gloves. That can be kind of uncomfortable and it's this is a workspace that more than one person will probably be using. So having gloves with your sweat on them and then having someone else wanting to go into that is probably not the best thing. So just keep that in mind. If that does happen, clean the outsides of the gloves with a paper towel um, before or once you're done so that that doesn't become an issue. Um, it's important that you don't go into the glove box too quickly. So um, the, as you heard, and maybe I can make it do it again, the pressure will change. pressure will change when you enter the glove box. You can hear that clicking sound, that's the solenoid. If you go in too quickly on some of the older glove boxes, that solenoid can't keep up and you can um, crash the box, so to speak. You can have issues with the system that maintains the pressure if you enter the, the box too quickly. These gloves are kind of delicate. So you want to be careful with them. Don't use anything sharp or watch out for broken glass. It's important not to touch the bottom of the glove box. That's where broken glass and other sharp things might be. And uh, also you can get the gloves really dirty that way. Um, adjusting the pressure with the glove box, um, the pedal here on the floor. Get back out of here a bit. That should be really useful for people that are smaller that have a harder time getting their arms in because of the pressure. So the the left pedal decreases the pressure while the right one increases it. So if you're smaller, you may want to decrease the pressure to be able to get your arms in easier and have an easier time moving around in the box. I can show increasing the pressure. I can get the gloves to stick out. Yeah, so this is more like what you should see the glove box when it's properly working. So to demonstrate how to get into the glove box, um, it's often convenient to start with your non-dominant hands, so you can have your dominant hand to help you get your fingers kind of into the finger holes. And then you can use that to just push your arm through. 
you do pull on the back of the glove, be very careful in doing so. Gloves are kind of delicate. There you go. Then using or putting your other hand in, kind of work your fingers in. And then it's important that we move slowly, not to overwhelm the solenoids and crash the box. If you're tall, this can be difficult because you'll have to kind of squat down to get your arm enough room to push your arm forward. If you're smaller, this can be easier, but you might want to adjust the pressure. Again, the left one decreases the pressure in the box, the right increases, and it decreases just a tad. It decreases a little bit slow, so. Anyway, it's good to remember that Again, anytime you're in the box, working in here is going to take two to three times longer than you expect, or than it would if you were working outside of the box. And that anything you want to use in here, you need to bring in with you. We'll have a discussion of the ports in another clip. Um, it's important to not touch the bottom of the box and to avoid, you know, so that you don't get the gloves dirty or touch anything that might be sharp on the bottom so we don't cut the gloves and compromise the apps here in the glove box. Um, if you can't reach the back, or if you need to pick up small things that are off the bottom or hard to reach, um, tweezers are often used to do so. So if we need to pick up, say, there's a stir bar out of the speaker, you can do it with tweezers and that's pretty easy. Or if we need to get that septum that's way in the back there, we can use the tweezers to do so. So if you find that the gloves are sticky, um, that means the glove box needs to be purged. It's got solvent vapors in there and that can cause the gloves to be sticky. Um, if you do have any broken glass or anything, it can be cleaned up either with a small dustpan that would be need to be brought in and kept in here, or something like a Kim wipe. You can uh, put a bit of, gre of vacuum grease on a, glove, on a Kim wipe and use that to dab up pieces of broken glass carefully contain them in the Kim wipe and then put that in a trash receptacle. Many times they'll have a, a log book for the glove box. So if you want to um, use the glove box, make sure you check the log book to see if anyone has um, that time to use it while you want to use it so that it's free. So if you're gonna weigh a sample in the glove box, um, it's important to keep the lid on your um, balance closed. Um, this just prevents stuff from getting in there until you're going to use the balance, of course. Um, we use aluminum weigh boats in the glove box because they can be oven dried and plastic or paper weigh boats will retain water and that's obviously something we don't want in the glove box. Um, weighing things on the balance in the glove box is just the same. You use your tweezers to move things around, like your weigh boats for instance. And grab one and kind of show that. Tip that up. These little tabs on these are convenient for this. You just always want to move slowly. That's my grip there. Moving slowly is always the, the best way to do things. You might also have to learn how to do things with your non-dominant hand depending on where things are situated in the glove box. So if you make a mess in the glove box, you know, got Kim wipes in places, or if you have dirty stir bars from whatever you might be doing, bring them out of the glove box with you. Again, we'll cover using the ports in the glove box in another clip. All right, that's some more comfortable pressure to work in, so. Anyway, and then getting out, of course, is much easier. You just pull your arms back, especially if you have that good positive pressure. It's really easy to get out, quite a bit harder to get in. So one of the single biggest hazards to the gloves of a glove box are needles. Um, if you do need to use a needle in the glove box, uh, avoid it if you can. If you do need to use one, um, you can put them into like a septum to bring them out of the glove box. 
um, if you do need to use one that's go that punctured through a septum, be don't push it as all, all the way. That's just kind of asking for someone to grab that septum and puncture the glove. And then never recap needles. That's just a general rule. You shouldn't do that outside of the glove box either. Um, but if you are done using a needle in the glove box, have a, a waste container, a tray of some kind that's specifically for needles, and then they should be brought back out of the glove box um, as soon as they can be, so they don't prevent or they don't present any risk to the gloves. Perfect. If you do poke a hole in the gloves, be sure to tell someone so that it can be repaired immediately. It's much worse to let a hole sit in the gloves and uh, allow the atmosphere in the glove box to be spoiled and potentially valuable reagent stored in the glove box to be spoiled rather than um, you know being the one who caused the hole. So if you have a small hole they can be patched with little bike tire patch things so they're, they can be pretty small and they kind of just rough up the surface of the glove wherever the hole will be and then um, it's a glue that sticks them that can be used on small holes if you have a larger hole you'll probably need assistance to uh, replace the glove and there are covers for the glove holes um, in the meantime so that they until the glove can be replaced. So if your glove box isn't performing as you'd like with uh, you have say an end, for instance a water detector or an OT meter that would be kind of probably over there um, or if you just have like a scheduled timing for doing your regen you would need to regenerate your catalyst so that's what this equipment here would be the catalyst is in this jacket here um, and this uh, box with valves on it is where the uh, kind of the controls for regen This will only work to remove, um, say, oxygen from your solvent or from your catalyst. Uh, it doesn't work to uh, keep solvent get solvents that might damage your catalyst off of it. So keep that in mind. You may actually have to replace your catalyst at some point. Um, and this just works by pumping a stream of uh, uh, five percent or near there hydrogen with uh, nitrogen as the balanced gas um, over the heated catalyst to uh, remove the, the oxygen that's accumulated on it.